Minority Leader Thiessen, thank you for letting us interview you. Can you begin by telling us what your priorities are for this session? The big issues are going to be transportation bill, I think, it's the big unfinished business from 2015. Uh, we really need to get that done, something that includes a statewide proposal long term uh, that fixes the problem uh, for the long term. So that's going to be a, a big thing uh, for us. But we also want to make sure that as we look at this budget surplus, we're making it work in a way that um, works for all Minnesotans and not just kind of special interests and the elites. Um, so I think investments in education is something we should also be looking at. I think a tax bill, uh, to the extent we do one, needs to be focused on the middle class and not what the Republicans did last year, which was huge giveaways to big corporations. Um, and then we'd love to move forward on things like um, our, the Working Parents Act, so earned sick leave, uh, paid, fam uh, paid time off for families for pregnant, you know, when women have babies and when dads uh, can take it as well, uh, or also to care for, uh, you know, older loved ones that are sick. Uh, and we are also going to be pushing uh, fairly hard uh, to make sure that we address this problem of all this huge amounts of money just sloshing through our political system. Uh, we're going to pro we're proposing a constitutional amendment uh, to make sure that um, everyone, uh, you know, candidates, I have to disclose who gives me money and what I spend the money on, but there's many, many special interests out there that don't have to disclose any of that and spend millions of dollars in legislative races, not to mention presidential races, uh, in politics. And we need to uh, at least shine a light on that so people know who's spending money trying to influence them and how much they're spending. Because uh, otherwise, you know, it's just going to turn more and more people off uh, from our political system, and that's terrible in a democracy. How does a, a short session affect these priorities? Well, you know, everybody talks about it's a short session, so it's hard to get things done. You know, frankly, the, uh, the legislature last year passed, you know, $30 billion of a budget that was negotiated in, you know, less than a week. So 10 weeks to me actually sounds like a, quite a lot of time. Has your caucus been doing anything in preparation for a short session? Yeah, I mean, I think we've been more than anybody the caucus of ideas. I mean, we put out a small business package. We put out the Disclose Act, this constitutional amendment. Uh, we put out a package of ideas around Greater Minnesota, which the Republicans drastically left behind in the last legislative session. Uh, we put out some proposals on reforming how the legislative process works. Uh, we have the Working Parents Act. Uh, we, put, uh, we put out a whole series of proposals last week on bringing down the cost of health care instead of uh, including addressing the increasing cost of prescription drugs. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work in preparation for this session, and we think we need to uh, not let this be another wasted opportunity like 2015 was. There was talk, obviously, this year about a special session to address three issues. Real ID, unemployment benefits for minors, and racial disparities. Do you want to see those uh, issues addressed this session, and how quickly would you like to see them addressed? Well, the speaker said that he would take up the unemployment benefits for iron miners on the first day, and I expect that he'll honor that promise. You know, he likes to say he's a man of his word. I expect him to keep his word on that one this time. Um, and the real ID, it stuns me that it took us 13 weeks and we couldn't even come up with a solution. That's the easiest thing in the world to get done. Uh, so I hope that we can get that done in the first week as well. I mean, all we really need to do is have the real ID and have an alternative for people that don't want to get the real ID and with the acknowledgement that they can't use it for federal purposes and we solve the problem. I mean, this it's, it's just an easy thing to solve. Uh, it doesn't bode well for the session that it took 13 weeks and they couldn't get to a resolution on that. But that set aside. And then disparities is a huge issue. And I'm just, I mean, it's tough to deal with in a special session. Uh, but I'm glad that it's part of the debate that's going on. Uh, you know, just because, you know, we have these pockets of economic disparity all over the state. You know, there's pockets, you know, communities of color in the Twin Cities. Uh, but there's also pockets uh, all over the state. You know, the Iron Range is facing a very diff difficult and challenging time, as we just talked about, uh, and other parts of Minnesota as well. So uh, I'm hopeful that we can keep that, shining that light on it. And there are idea uh, good ideas. You know, one thing that I think would be a very big step forward on that is something that Senator Jeff Hayden and I are working on, which is called a, uh, an equity note or an, a disparities uh, note. And like a fiscal note that we have that tells us how much a bill is going to cost, uh, this would be a, a, piece, uh, a piece of information that would come with every bill where the agency would say this bill is either going to increase or decrease disparities uh, because one thing we haven't done as a legislature is actually focus on that in a thoughtful and deliberate way. And I think the, the forcing us to kind of think about is this actually going to increase or decrease these disparities in health and education and jobs or whatever it is, uh, is an important step forward structurally so that uh, we can start to close those gaps that we have. Well, you know, this session is going to be unusual. 
with the Capitol closed for the restoration and there's no running water, bathrooms for legislators are outside. How do you think this isn't going to impact session? The worst part of it is that the public is not going to have the same kind of access. I mean, whether I have to go downstairs to the bathroom, you know, that that's kind of a very minor problem from in my in my mind. But the big problem is that this public is, uh, you know, going to be shut out from the process in a way that they haven't been before. Uh, and sadly, that could have entirely been avoided. I mean, the, the majority, the speaker, Speaker Doubt, and the majority decided, I think, for purely political reasons, that they wouldn't take the cheaper and obvious choice, which would have allowed public access and have the committee meetings, the, the legislature, the House meet in the new Senate building. Uh, they chose to meet in a construction site. And, um, you know, they're going to have to live with the fallout of that. So I think it's going to have uh, a significant adverse effect on the, you know, on the public's ability to engage in, in, in lawmaking uh, and in the process of setting the laws for them, which in a representative democracy is, is bad. Is there anything you want the public to know about how they can contact, you know, the, the DFL caucus and have their input heard? Well, our doors are always open. People can visit. They can email. They can call. Um, you know, they can do all of those things, and, uh, and I hope that they do. Um, uh, but uh, it's just unfortunate that we're in a situation now where when things are being debated on the floor, the kind of access the public used to have both to talk to their legislator directly and face to face, which is the best way to communicate, and to put a presence at the, you know, in, at the legislature. I mean, the Capitol or where the legislature meets should be the people's house, you know, and so you know that oftentimes there'll be people that come down in large groups. So the, the disabilities folks will come down, uh, the advocates for you know, people with disabilities. Um, seniors will come down, uh, farmers will come down, and they'll have rallies in the Capitol and be there for a day, able to intermingle with their legislators, and we're not going to be able to have that this year. And so that, uh, that really is, is unfortunate. And it's just another example, I think, of what's become an increasingly significant problem at the legislature. I mean, we saw at the end of last session where the public and most legislators we're actually locked out of the decision-making process in a way that we haven't seen, I don't think, in Minnesota, in my time at least, in the legislature. Uh, and, it, and it has a bad impact on public policy. You know, as many people know, a lot of stuff got slipped into that bill more than usual uh, that had to be fixed in the special session. Uh, and in addition to that, it kind of turns people off democracy. Uh, and that is, you know, again, uh, can be fatal, you know, to a representative democracy when people start saying, you know, it's just the special interest in the back rooms that are pulling the strings. Uh, you know, having this meet meeting in the Capitol, it's going to be exactly the same thing. It's going to just reinforce that perception that it's special interest pulling the strings. There's going to be a lot that hinges on this session because it's right before the election. What do you think that your, your caucus has to do to do well for Minnesotans? Uh, well, I think doing well by Minnesotans is all we have to do. You know, the, the politics are going to work themselves out. Uh, our job here at the legislature during the legislative session is to make sure we're moving the state forward, we're doing things that help ordinary Minnesotans. Uh, you know, too many people out there right now are feeling like the deck is stacked against them. Uh, and in some sense for good reason, because that's how our economy is working. I think that the things that we're talking about, whether it's, you know, earned sick leave or paid time off, uh, whether it's investing in early child education, uh, freezing college tuitions, uh, whether it's bringing prescription drug prices down, those are the things that are going to help rebalance that playing field. Uh, and so I think that, you know, as long as we're fighting for ordinary Minnesotans and not special interests, uh, I think, and that we're working to make sure the economy is working for everybody, uh, I think that we're going to do just fine in the elections. But the reason we need to do that is because it's what's right for Minnesota.